there goes. Well, what can I say? Um, I'm glad to see so many of you people here today. Uh, when we first considered organising something like this, initially we joked that it would just be Magnus and I speaking to about five of our shared white friends. But uh, I'm glad to see there's, well, at least six. <laughs> Uh, as the other co-founder of the Australian Freedom of Speech Movement, uh, I think it would be appropriate to talk about the other main issue that uh, we stand for. That Magnus uh, talked about the awful manifestations within our laws and society that violate freedom of speech and open, and open unfettered discourse. Uh, I think it's appropriate that I talk about, touch on what we believe to be the root cause of this, that being political correctness. I was quite amused to see what the dictionary defines it as. Um, they, it claims that it's the avoidance of forms of expression or action that are perceived to exclude, marginalise or insult groups of people who are socially disadvantaged or discriminated against. Uh, to be honest, that's just merely not what I or most of you know it to be. When I think of the term political correctness, I think of the collective belief of a certain group of people that a certain opinion is so contradicting to their own collective belief that they feel they can justify it and sense uh, the censorship and ostracization of it, uh, of whom it came from, and potentially worse. Uh, the main problem that I see with political greatness is that through its own design, uh, this unhealthy, toxic ideology perpetuates itself on and on and ingrains itself further and further within society, even if not shared by the majority at the time. And we observe this around the world in different ways. Uh, in the Middle East, uh, political greatness revolves around one very specific religion, uh, which has then manifested itself into the likes of barbaric blasphemy laws. The Islamic fundamentalists extremists dominate with their views and apply it with such force on a number of fronts that people become too scared to criticize in fear of their own safety. Here in Australia and across the Western world, with the help of the both, both the politically biased and disgusting education system and the media, we are witnessing the promotion and the slow censorship of every, anything other than left-wing values. This culture shared by a group of people that only forms one way of thinking that a, that a contradicting opinion is deserving of punishment. This mindset suffocates free speech and healthy unfettered discourse. It forces what is classed to be the establishment by the establishment as extreme views to go underground and hide and propagate out of sight in a potentially very unhealthy way, while justifying the existence of ridiculous established notions like 18C. Even now, even now, as we speak, the culture of political correctness is encouraging people to seek the vilification laws we observed uh, during the same-sex marriage survey to remain in place. This is the slippery slope that we joked about decades ago, when reason and rationale and the moral right to share your belief what you believe are overwhelmed by the people's self-righteous indignation towards criticism. At the end of the day, the right to free speech is an inherent part of an honest, democratic society. And as we speak, there are those whose current objective is to censor and bully us all into an Orwellian nightmare. This is a rally that represents the shared anger and hostility felt by the wave of indoctrination being influenced into the minds of our children and youth that only certain opinions are allowed and others should be punished by the state. I am scared for my future. I am scared that the beliefs I hold now will be censored in the future so much that I could barely sh share them with my own children. And if the president, Thomas J. Whitmore, from Independence Day was here uh, today, I believe he would conclude with the following. You will once again be fighting for our freedom, not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We are fighting for our right to live, to exist, but as the day we stood here and declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. Thank you. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe.
While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.